Hello, this is Beta Ray Ben for Pixel Spank, and that little microphone you can see attached to my neck, it's not working for some reason, so there's no audio for this section, so I'm, I'm re-recording it in post. What I've got here is the uh, the Lego Millennium Falcon, it's the, uh, it's the smaller version, not the big version, the big version's incredibly expensive, this is the, this is the fun size version, that's what we call it. Um, Apparently at this point I just play around. Oh look, I found the knife. This will help me to cut open the box because obviously I normally try and rip it open with my hands. That breaks the box. A knife is a great addition. I really like that knife actually. I, I, it's useless for cooking but it's great for doing this sort of thing. It's got a nice curved edge to it and a big heavy handle. So uh, first things first, I, I opened the booklet and I was really pissed off to see all those stickers in there. Because they, they were quite small. Most of them were round, which is somehow worse. Um, yeah, I hate seeing that. And I, I get the box out itself, and it's very straightforward, as all Lego boxes are. It's all in bags. A particular note here was that I think only one or maybe two of the bags was unlabeled. So there were, like, say, nine numbered bags and there were maybe two number ones and one unlabeled one or some, something like that. It was it was pretty easy to figure out. I very cleverly put them in order. I was looking at the pictures here and discovered that there were a lot of minifigs, including a tiny BB-8, which I've already got, and some from Force Awakens, who I didn't recognize at the time. Uh, yeah. I decided using the knife to open the instructions was a good idea. I utterly failed on two attempts there. So what I actually do here is I pretend I've used the knife, but I actually just rip it with my hands um, behind the curtain, if you will. Yeah, stickers, I've already been over that. They're very important. I now pour over the stickers for far too long and decide, are they important? Yes, probably. Set them aside. Is he... I'm I'm now also demonstrating there's a big pile of rubbish because every Lego piece I do, I put all the rubbish just down there in front of that Star Wars box on the floor and just leave it there, never clear it up. It's becoming quite a lot of stuff. I was reading the instructions here. They tell me I'll get another brick separator, which I did. That was enjoyable. I think it was actually in one of the first bags as well, so that was a bonus. And uh, it also says start with step one and go from there. As all Lego instructions do, I, I don't know why I poured over it. Frankly, if I was going to, I should have also showed the book on camera as opposed to sort of hidden behind the stuff. All right, good. I'm now getting to the bit where I say, oh, let's cut to me building it by bringing the camera in. I get distracted there by something shiny, but not too long. Bring the camera in, zoom in, cut to me building, then cut to me. Hopefully, I'll actually have turned the microphone on for that bit.
a bad build overall. There are a few very annoying parts. Um, in particular, if I'll show you at the back here, this blue thruster. Uh, it's like a blue pipe that you have to fit in. It's off center now. If I put it, if I put it symmetrical, I either have to stretch it really tight or it's too loose and it bugs me. It will annoy me forever. It's practically invisible even to this camera. Um, and there was one or two bits inside that, that the, the order of putting them on was just awful. For example, uh, like th these bits here, these flaps, these all move, right? That's fine. They're pretty much the last thing you do. In fact, as, as I was building it, I was, I was getting very close to the end thinking, hmm, doesn't really look like the Falcon yet. It's because none of the roof's on. But the, these roof bits, it has you put them all on and then put all the decorations on top for which it's way easier to take them off. So I, I don't know why it does that, to be honest, it's, it's confusing. But let's open it up. It, does, it, it opens up in a, in a manner I find reminiscent of the launch mechanism for the ship from uh, Lost in Space. But I think that might just be in my own head. <clears throat> so we've got a little gun turret on top, that spins. There's one on the bottom which spins as well. It does. This opens up to show the shaft I think that they have to climb in and out of to get to it. At least I assume that's the idea, but it's not It's not a through shaft. It doesn't lead anywhere. So, I don't know, just opens like that. No no real reason for that. You can see I got Ray sat down there. Came with quite a few little mini figure out, figures actually. Um, I can't figure out quite who they all are. There's Ray there at the seat doing something. There's Chewy, uh, I don't know how visible he is. He's just there. I like Chewy. He comes with a little bow caster, right? The important thing about this is it can actually fire and it fires incredibly far, right? You, c you can't see where that went and neither can I because it fires little studs, but it shoots them properly far, like, like almost too far, quite frankly. It's it's clearly a throwback to when, when, or in this country, it's still acceptable for toys to have ludicrous launching mechanisms. Because it, it is definitely enough to. Just firing it into my hand now to test it. It's fifty-fifty whether it actually worked though. Okay, now it's now it's not working at all. I've I've damaged it somehow. How's that? How's how how have I broken this? Oh, I've not got it lined up, right? Bane of my life now. All right, here we go, ready? Point blank range. I mean, it didn't hurt, but that could catch you in the eye unawares. Uh, fortunately, because it, it fires generic studs, they give you, there's like a load of red ones they give you, which I keep dropping everywhere. And there's a, just a load of spare studs anyway. And if you, if you ever do any Lego sets, you get studs. That's what, that's little Chewbacca, that's what he gets. Ray, I'm going to attempt to take her out without pulling the seat out. Yeah, so she's got kind of a weird ponytail, which I, I guess she has that in the film. I don't remember these sort of lumps, but it doesn't matter. And she comes with a gun. It's not the gun that she has uh, at any point in the film, but it's kind of a generic one. That's fine, no lightsaber, that'd be confusing. There's, uh, there's Finn um, wearing Poe's jacket. That's just generic, they go together. There's Han Solo, right? Who you can see is sat in the cockpit. I'm not gonna take him out because the cockpit's a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, but it's actually, it's not that hard to be honest, but I'm, st I'm still not gonna take him out. He's in there. And then there's these two. These two I can't figure out. They've got like a big gun and two pistols. I think they might be some of the people that that uh, that get on the barge with the raftars from Force Awakens because it's a Force Awakens set. Um, I'm not really sure. Eagle-eyed viewers will note that I've got the wrong head on the wrong body because I picked up a head and just assumed it went with the body that was in the bag. I put it on, realised my mistake when there were two heads. It was on the wrong body and then it would never come off. I tried, I tried biting it, I tried pliers. It was, it was just so firmly affixed, I thought, fuck it. And then I decided to leave all the minifigures to the end. That was a mistake, because I just had a pile of heads, torsos and legs I had to match up. 
and there's a uh, there's a little BB-8 in there. I've had one of them before with my other BB-8, so look, two of them. That actually works quite well because it sticks in there. It, it, looks, it looks like a bit of the setting. Um, so the actual innards, there's this kind of uh, area for like the, uh, I want to say hyperdrive, but just a general engineering nonsense. I don't really remember it from the film, but there's a, there's a pipe that seems realistic. I think these are beds or something like beds. It's hard to tell. This area is the bit I actually remember. It's, it's where Chewie's playing weird chess with C-3PO and also they just kind of sit around and chat. It feels like a seating area. It's, um, it's, quite, it's quite pleasing. I don't know why this bit of the ship is different to all the, all the other rooftop bits. These, these are all basically the same, except for this which which has a really complicated movement, but I don't remember at any time the Millennium Falcon like really having any of that. I think it's just the look, which is a slight issue with the Millennium Falcon. It's kind of a crappy looking ship, um, just not from a design aspect, but from a, from a making a Lego aspect. There's not really a lot going on on the outside. Now that doesn't fit for some reason. How how is that become off center? It hasn't. It just goes on top. Because I I got to pretty well around this point and realised I ha I hadn't done these two fins at the front or the, the or the cockpit. I was like, oh, I'm actually nearly done, even though it felt like I hadn't much finished the top. And it's just because there's not really a lot on the top. This this dish is a little bit disappointing. In my head, there's a round dish on top of the Millennium Falcon, and this isn't it. In practice, there might not be one. So we got these two at the front. There's guns here. I don't know if the Millennium Falcon actually has guns there. I, I assume it must, but I couldn't say for certain. These are firing. That's disconcerting. If you jam your finger through these holes, there's these plastic rods in there. Um, I'm gonna make a small, small test fire range because I fired one of these off whilst building it and it went, um, I don't know where it went, it just kept going. It may still be going now. So you, th these have quite a bit going for them. There's like, I don't know, it's a small railgun assembly that does it, but it's potent. Are you ready for this? I'm, I'm, I may have built it up too much at this point, right? Here we go. See that? Not really, can you? But these little red rods, which I can barely even see. See that's the background? Yeah. And it's, they're actually quite easy to fire, you just jam your finger in and they go. Reloading them is quite easy as well, you just, there's little holes to the side here that you force them in. I don't know what these secondary things are for, but apparently I think they're just, I, I suspect if I look at the Millennium Falcon there's just a lot of weird stuff on it. It's one of those, because it's quite an old, old design. And it specifically looks like a bit of junk. Or is it a hamburger with an olive sticking out? I think that was the original design. All right, let's, let's flip it upside down. This is painful now flipping it because this gun always falls off. So I'm just gonna take it off first. Other than that, it's flat enough that it will just lie upside down. I'm now realizing I left bits in there. Lots of studs are falling around. There's not, not really anything to see on the bottom except for the gun, which I find odd that they put the work in to do that. You can also see where this came off, this, um, box, for want of a better word. It came off because nothing holds it on. I can only assume that I, I missed a step in the instructions because all, all that holds it on really is like a little lip caught on these red things. I think it's supposed to move, but I haven't quite worked it out unless it's meant to be, I don't know, because there's, no, um, there's no ramp to get in unless, oh no, that is the ramp to get in. I did I wasn't even fully aware that was there. Well, let's, let's see it again from a better angle. It's got feet, which I particularly like. The box has fallen off again. We're gonna ignore the box. All right, let's get in here. So the, the ramp, it's very pleasing opening this up. I'm, gl I'm glad they make it like hinged as well and not like fully removable. All right, so how are we gonna, yeah, it's visible. So this, this is supposed to be the entry ramp, I think to get in. Because on the, on the other side, there's another, there's another one that goes up and down, which I suspect is supposed to be like the hidden compartment of the floorboards. 
where they hide in a new hope and it's part of the smuggling aspect. And, and this, this goes under that one and it's supposed to be like a little tray, but it doesn't, um, doesn't really stay on very well. I think, I feel like I've left some bits out that are supposed to hold it on, but I haven't had any noticeable large bits on this one left. In fact, no, I haven't had any large bits that could do it. So I, I, I don't know. There's, if you don't move it a lot, it does stay on. It's when you, when you pick it up and move it, it falls off. So it's sort of pointless. You can then, um, because the floor's all Lego, you can just stick minifigs in wherever you want. And they're all, they're all short enough that they, they do, they will stay in there with the, with the roof closed. Ah, I've just remembered. These two idiots, I stuck, I just put them on this so that they would, they would stand still and stand up. This could be the piece that holds this in somehow. That, yeah, I'll figure that out later, along with this gun turret that, that doesn't need to be kept on. Um, so yeah, overall, it's pretty good. It looks, it looks quite good from afar. I, I quite like the idea of having it, like if, if you have it sort of on display or whatever, you don't have it fully closed up and you would just, you just take a few of these panels off and set them to the side so you can sort of see in a bit, but also see the roof. But it's clearly the Falcon. It holds together well in the hand. And the big clue that this is supposed to be a toy and not like a, like a, what's it called? A, like a display model is it doesn't come with a, a black stand with a card telling you about it on it, which I, I feel is like Lego speak for, for something important. Um, a little bit disappointing that this isn't on a hinge to open up to, you have to, you have to take the whole thing off to get to the cat cockpit. It's not that hard, but it just, it's just a bit, dis but then I suppose it doesn't actually open up in the films at all, does it? The only way in is to walk in from the back. So yeah, I'm, no, I'm no longer annoyed about that. Let's get the gun turret back on top. I'm utterly convinced though that there should, oh, bugger, that's come off now. That there should be a, like a little dish on top of it. I might be thinking of something else. I just, now I need, I need a Star Destroyer, don't I? Maybe an X-Wing. I need, I need, I need some, something evil to balance out the good. Um, now, talked about building, talked about the minifigs. It was a, uh, it was one or two slightly confusing bits during the build. I, in fact, I'll tell you what they did a lot of. They'd, um, they'd show that you'd start with a big flat panel, and they'd say, yeah, assemble these two pieces together and put it on there, and they'd like have arrows pointing to it. But then they'd also they'd also like stick six other bits on without really mentioning it. So if you're paying attention, it's fine. But if you're kind of skimming it, as you tend to do towards the end of these, you'll miss it. And there was a point where th this top section here is symmetrical. The one on this side was fine. This one was out by by like one one Lego nipples worth. I don't know what you call the individual sticky bits. It, it was out by that much and just nothing lined up. And I had to take the whole thing apart and, and sort of reassemble it. But, but you can't cause the instructions are step by step. So I was, I was like on step 90 and I had to skip, skip back to 50 and it was a, it was a whole ordeal. I'm going to stick these two on top. Their guns are a bit, a bit disappointing. They, particularly this one, it seems to be an old musket. I'm sure if I look in the films, that's exactly what they look like, but but without the reference material. I don't even know who they are, to be honest. The guy with an eye patch and a woolly hat and this long haired fellow. But they, you know, they, they seem happy enough. I'll put that on there, that'll, that'll forever confuse me that I've got an extra thing there. It, just, it seems odd to me, it has the firing bits, but you wouldn't really wanna, wanna do anything with it other than very occasionally just shoot them out because they will get lost. <laughs> they seem designed for, I don't know if they're spring loaded or what, it doesn't say, it doesn't give any instructions about, oh yeah, don't leave them loaded because it will wear them out. Uh, you, you presume it's springs because what else could it be? But I can't, I can't work it out. It's very impressive to be honest, how they managed to do it. Especially the fact that you, to, to fire them, I'm just pressing the other end of the damn thing. It's not, there's no like, there's no separate trigger button. It's, it's all on this stick. 
but that's that's Lego for you. They they are the masters. And they were absolutely early on. There are a few steps which were put put this brick on this brick and then this brick on this brick, and it's like this is just this is just making up brick numbers at this point. You could have. You could have just given me one larger piece instead of giving me four to assemble into this one piece, but it's fine. There, there were a lot of small fiddly bits and a lot of stickers, particularly these. These were a real bitch. These stickers are donut shaped to go, to go on like that thing. There's eight of them. Of course I know there's eight. I had to put them all on by hand. Putting on a donut shaped sticker, putting on any sticker is quite tricky. There's a certain amount of fear that you'll get it wrong, but donut shape somehow makes it harder. But uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I quite like it. It's got a good look from a distance. It's clearly the Falcon. It's not as big. Oh, wait, hang on. I just realized I turned these up. That's the thing. Are they meant to be up? I don't know. When you think Falcon, you think these two bits round this bit here. Not a lot else, really. Just springs to mind in my head. I'm not, I'm not detail orientated. Um, how much does it cost? A lot, I would imagine. I haven't got the price. I never really look at the price. I, I suspect it's probably north of £100 though, which frankly is quite expensive, but it's cheaper than six or 700 for the really big one, so you got that going for you. Ah, it's just it's fallen off now. It's, that's broken. It's a good thing about Lego. Never really breaks, does it? He says, immediately breaking a piece. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.